Hey guys, this is MJ with the Rustic Makeable family. Today we're gonna make some rustic houses, three of them. We're gonna use this white lace paper that I have and we're gonna get some really cute houses going on here. All right, today I'm using the paper stock called the Paper Studio. You can get it at Hobby Lobby. I'll have it in the links below. I am choosing their white satin. It's three different laces basically. So it's kind of like flowered lace looking paper. I like it because it has a satin sheen to it and I thought that would look kind of cute with the rustic edges. So we have the three houses we're going to do and I chose three different styles of that paper. Now on the houses, I pre-cut all of them already. You can do the sizes that you want. I like mine to be a little bit off. I have the three quarter thick wood still because you need it to stand up. And then I cut the chimney separate to go in those two. You can have the length you want, where you want to set them on the wood, however you want to do it is your thing. So I pre-cut all of these beforehand. And these are just the choices I chose because I think they're cute. And they're three houses that are a little different and yet they'll still be similar once I'm done with everything. So the chimneys will eventually attach with some wood glue, but right now we're gonna work on the paper. So we're gonna use some Mod Podge and we're gonna use it on this, again, cardstock that I got from Hobby Lobby. And they have all different kinds, which is great. So you can do whatever kind you want. Now this particular cardstock is a little bit chunkier than others. So with it, I like to get it wet first because I find that it's easier to work with if you get it wet before you add the Mod Podge to it. So that's what I'm gonna do and I'm placing it on both sides of the houses because I like to have the house look really cute on both sides. Now these are the scissors I'm gonna choose. They have different designs, so you can kind of get these scissors if you want or you can use plain one, that's fine too. I just like the little extra touch. Just choose whatever pattern you want. I'm gonna use the gray ones today. I like this particular pattern the most. And then we're gonna cut the edges of the paper with that and that just gives it a little bit of a cuter, I don't know, I, I just like it. It's a, it's a prettier look. Now I'm going to use a pretty long paintbrush to put the Mod Podge on because I'm getting pretty low on my glue and then I'm just gonna use a paper plate. So this is pretty simple. I'm gonna start with a pen. You can use a pen or a pencil. And we're just gonna start outlining these houses so that we can cut the paper and then we're gonna be applying that paper to each house. I'm putting the chimneys aside because we're gonna, I'm not putting paper on those. Now you can if you want to, that'd be great. I'm not going to because I want to stain these afterwards and I like to, the stain to show through because that gives it the rustic effect that I'm wanting. So I'm just kind of deciding which of the three houses do I want to have which pattern. And then you can kind of decide. You do have to do both sides. So make sure that when you're cutting the paper, you're going to have enough for your project. One sheet is plenty for both, or for both sides of the houses, so for each house. So then what I like to do, because sometimes I'll use this paper that I have left over for other projects, just find an edge. I like to go along an edge first as much as I can so that I can save a lot of that paper for another project. So flip your paper over to the side that does not have the pattern and that is a side that we're going to use the pen to write on so that we don't have any markings when we're done. And just lightly trace across just like I'm doing. Now once you've done that remember you're flipping your house over because we're doing the other side. So you have to flip it over because we're doing the other face of that house. So trace that out too, and you're pretty much ready. So it's not very hard to do. Now with this, with these scissors, make sure you go inside the lines and you'll understand why once we get a little further with this project. Do not follow the lines, go inside the lines. So kind of watch how far I'm going in. I'm cutting inside the lines because what we're wanting to do is when this piece is cut out, I actually want some of the wood on the house exposed. And that again, we're gonna stain later. And so that's just something cute. It just shows a little bit of the wood and that makes it more rustic looking. So just take your time and cut all the edges out. Now, once you've cut it out, lay it against your house to make sure that you have enough of the wood exposed. So see how the wood is exposed once I've placed that, see how I have some of the wood just kind of exposed all along the edges. That's what I want. Just like that. And now I'm going to cut the other side and we're gonna do the exact same thing. So always check your work. Don't just assume that it's going to be cut exactly how you want because you cut inside the lines. 
always double check your project beforehand and then that way when you're ready to glue it just goes on much easier much smoother and then just set aside your extra paper because you'll have that for other projects okay so now I'm just double checking I've got both sides and that piece or this house is ready to go because I have both pieces on there so I've done all the houses now all three of them are done we're getting ready to put the Mod Podge on and with this remember I did say that this paper is pretty thick so you do not have to put water on it but I would say it's a pretty good idea to do it because it just helps make it more flexible so I just kind of let it soak a little bit it doesn't take very long just like a minute or two and then just let that soak up some and then you'll see afterwards how I flex the paper see how it's just kind of flexing now that actually helps it to adhere especially on the edges so that they don't just flip up and you have to deal with gluing them over and over to try to get them flat so make sure it's kind of pliable I like to kind of bend it a little bit in the direction that I'm gonna go so see how I'm just kind of bending that downward because I want it to adhere to the house now when you apply the Mod Podge I do it all over and you can do it pretty thick but what I do want you to do is make sure you get all the edges and that way you don't it's just less work in the long run be careful moving your maneuvering your paper because you don't want to rip it at all because it is starting to get a little bit more pliable and you could tear it if you're not careful now at the very end when I'm done and I have glue all over it I go back and forth make sure the edges are done and I just lay it kind of flat because if you don't you'll see it on the house that you're working on or whatever project you're doing so get that excess and lay it kind of in flat lines just simply attach it to the wood and start rubbing out the little air bubbles start rubbing this rub these gently make sure that you either have some glue on your fingers see I'm just rubbing it there's a little piece kind of look at the sheen kind of look in different directions make sure you're getting all the bubbles out if you need to use a little bit of the water to help your fingers to slide better or some of the glue to help your fingers slide better so that you don't rip the paper now I'm gonna go I like to go just as a precaution <laughs> go along the edges of the entire project I'm working on and just put some extra glue you can't hurt see how that piece just came out there's always places that you miss I mean we are human after all so once I've done that then I just kind of again get all the extra bubbles out push all the edges down make sure that they're all adhering the way that I want them to and I'm kind of looking in all different directions within the light to make sure that all the air bubbles are up because that's your key you don't want all those air bubbles some projects you might because it might make it look older but in this particular one I don't really want a whole lot of air bubbles so then I'm just using a damp paper towel because again I don't want to tear the paper and I'm just getting all the excess glue off and that's pretty much it you're just pushing out any little air bubbles that you see because they will be there I have never put a Mod Podge paper on ever without having air bubbles if someone has out there put it in the comments and let me know how you do it that'd be great it's a process but again be gentle with the paper so you don't rip it okay that side's done we're just gonna kind of fast forward a little bit here because it's pretty much the same process and you'll do this on all the houses the exact same process until you're done And there you go so this house is done isn't that cute wait till we get the stain on it it'll make it pop all right we have all three houses so the next thing that we do I'm gonna go behind the scenes and put those chimneys on now I've already attached the chimneys all I did was use wood glue and let them set for a day simple as that I let the paper dry out for a day I let the wood glue set I didn't have to clamp it or anything and now we're just getting ready to do the smelly stinky stain and so one thing with this since there are crevices I like to use q-tips and of course you guys know by now I love to use old socks so that's how we're gonna apply the stain and today I'm using walnut stain you can use any color you want doesn't matter and I'm just using an old Hobby Lobby bag because you know this gets messy and I'm upstairs because it's really cold outside and I didn't want to go outside I'll probably regret it later because it's gonna make my room smell but this is what I decided to do so I'm getting into all the crevices and now I'm using my sock so kind of watch my technique here I don't like to have the stain over the entire part so I am going to do all the edges where we have the wood exposed just gently we're just gonna do all the edging and just applying that stain now I will say I did apply this stain and to me when I was done with it 
it was a little too light. And the thing that's different is all woods take stains differently. So you have to kind of play with it. And I didn't have a spare with me to just kind of see what stain would look the best. So behind the scenes, when I got done with this shot, I went and added some espresso, Minwax espresso stain, because I wanted a darker look on this one. So I did the exact same technique I'm doing now, and I added some espresso to it, the exact same thing. Because if you can see on this, and you'll see when I'm done, when the houses come back, they're gonna be a little bit darker. And it's okay if you get some of the stain on the white paper, do not worry about it. Just wipe it off as you're doing it. And as you're wiping the edges, you're kind of just wiping from the very edge of where the stain is outward. You don't really want to get it all over the paper. If you can help it, if you do, that's fine. But I like to have some of that paper kind of not exposed to the stain. And that's pretty much it on that side. We're just doing the other side. Now see how I got a little bit of stain on that paper? Just wipe it off. Use your part of the sock that you haven't got any stain on and just wipe it off. And we're just going to do this to all three houses. And don't forget to use that Q-tip in the hard to reach areas. Okay, they're all three done. So we're going to let these dry and then we'll be ready for the next step. Okay, now behind the scenes again, I sanded mine. So I just used some sandpaper and I'll put it all in the um, links below because I wanted a more rustic look. So if you can see, I sanded edges. I just kind of went along touch the edges. I did not grab the paper, so I did not sand the paper. I only sanded the wood, not the paper. And I did a little more on the chimneys because there wasn't any paper there. You do not have to do that, but I kind of like that look because again, I'm going for the rustic. But you can choose how you want. Now, today we're going to put on cute little hardware. This is one of my favorite parts because it kind of brings them to life. So I have three different um, handles. I kind of like, you can do it how you want. I kind of like to put it like it's a doorknob. So it's kind of where a door would be. And then the hinge that I use, I like these cute little hinges and I'll put them in the link. They're so cute. I love these, love these, love these. I like to attach the chimney to the house with them because it's just an added metal. I'm big into metals and wood. I think it looks really cute together and it helps the look. Okay, so these have extremely small screws, extremely small. So I'm going to put some of them on behind the scenes, but I will show you how to put them on. The one thing that is nice, just use a screwdriver, use the small end because they're extremely small, but they are magnetized, which is great because they're so small, that's awesome. Um, so I'll be doing that too, and then I'll kind of show you how to add one. So figure out where you want your hardware. I like to make it like a door, like I said. So kind of, if that's what you like, if you like this look, then just kind of mimic what I do. And it doesn't have to be exact. Figure out where you want it. Now you can use, I like to use a smaller screw first, but then if you see the metal, um, oh, the piece of metal that's on here that we're gonna screw into the wood, it's quite thick. So I'm gonna have to use a thicker screw in the end. I start with a small screw. And I just simply start making a hole into the wood. Now the one thing about the screw, um, you don't wanna go all the way through because we are just doing hardware on one side. Now see how this hardware is too long? I have these wire cutters. Actually they're bolt cutters. This tool is awesome, I use it all the time. I'm gonna make it short enough to where it does not poke through to the other side. And that way it's just gonna screw into the wood but it's not gonna screw all the way through the back side because I don't wanna see it. It's just gonna be on one side. And you'll see at the very end what I mean if this isn't making sense to you right now. So I'm just doing this on all three and I'm gonna go behind the scenes and make some holes myself because this takes a while, but I will show you how to do one of them so you know what we're doing. And then we're gonna tie it up with the string afterwards. Okay, I have done two of these behind the scenes. Aren't they cute? I love them. Okay, so the handles I've already put in if for some reason they're loose, which usually they're not, you can add some Elmer's glue to them, put them in the hole first, and then re-screw them in, and that holds them tight. But I normally don't have a problem with that. Now, I've done the little hinge already, and I've done the hardware, and then I just like to tie around some twine, and I'll show you in the end again how to make the twine. Just a simple, really cute, easy bow, and then we're gonna hot glue that on to make sure it stays in place. And that's pretty much what we're going for. So let me show you on this last one each step that I did. So I did start the hinge, I only put two screws in and we'll finish putting those screws in, but I do wanna to talk to you about the screw. So I use a marker first and I decide how long do I need that screw to be? 
before I touch the other side. Then I mark it with a marker. Once I've marked it with a marker, I use painter's tape. See how I have the painter's tape there? And then that helps me know how deep I need to screw the screw in. I go to the edge of that painter's tape and stop. Because if I go any longer, I'll go through the wood. So I have it right where I need it, exactly as deep as I need it. So just screw that in. Don't go any further than that painter's tape. That's what it's there for. Take that out. And you have your beginning hole. This is the smaller screw and you do that so that you don't split the wood. You could pre-drill, but I don't. So, see how it's much thinner than the, what I need? So I'm gonna use the bigger screw now because I need a bigger hole. So now I go with that bigger screw. It may be an extra step, but I don't care. It works for me, so. Again, this one, I'm just going as deep as I was before with the other one. You should probably put painter's tape on this one too if you think that you could go through the wood. Okay, pretty much have that done. Now it is ready, and we're gonna be putting the doorknob in it. I'm just gonna start, and I've already broken that piece of metal off. I used my bolt cutters, made it the length I need, and I'm just starting it into the hole first. I feel it's grabbed the wood, so now I'm gonna put the base on, and now I'm gonna screw it in for good. I'm gonna screw it in for life. This is gonna be its new home. Gently take it around, you don't wanna break it, and you don't wanna split the wood, so just gently, it's just a process. Keep turning it until it's snug. Now this one has two pieces, so I'm getting close to the end, so I wanna make sure that I mark that second piece and just kinda of hold it in place where I want it so it won't be crooked. Pretty much where I want it. I'm gonna line it up and do it one last turn. And I want this one to be stuck. Okay. So that's pretty much it. And you'll do that with all of them and kind of decide where you want it. Now let's work with these itsy bitsy screws. I do love that they're magnetized. So much love that. But they're still a pain in the tush. So anyway, so just slowly, there's six of them, slowly start screwing them in to the wood. Now our next step is we're gonna get some of this um, twine. I go about on this one and it's really different lengths for each of you. I like to do four strands. See how I'm doing four strands? On this particular one, I measured it for you and it was 50 inches long. You don't necessarily have to go that long, but that's how long I did this one because I just want to make sure the longer the better because then you don't have to do it twice. So I do four strands and we're just gonna tie a little bow. It's just a really simple extra step that adds a little bit of, to me it adds a finished look to the houses, which I like. And I just like the cute little rustic look. So pretty simple. Now on this part, make sure that it's tight though because you don't want it just kind of moving all over the place and looking loose. So if it's not tight enough, do it again. Tighten it up. Now don't make it too big. I like it to be smaller and then I like the little, um, I like to force them into more of a loop. Then I just start cutting off the strands. It depends how far or how long you want them. I like them to kind of go to the bottom of the house. So I cut the four different lengths. I'll go long, short, medium, and long again. So long, short, medium, and long. Because remember, there are four strands to work with, and that's how I like to do it. Because it ends up looking cute and giving it more depth. And when gravity's taking its toll, it starts to come downward some, and then they just look really cute. And they just kind of dangle there. Now kind of fix it to how you want because my end step is I like to hot glue them. Isn't that cute? I just think they're so cute. I really like these. We're gonna hot glue just the back of the bow. You don't even want the glue showing. You want someone to think, oh, that bow is so darn cute just like it is and it never moves. I don't understand why. This is why. Little bit of hot glue, hide it behind there, hold it, tuck it tight. Form it into the shape that you want, and you're done. Get any excess, because again, you want to hide that you've even done that. And there you go. Are those not cute? I love it. I really like these. And the, the backs of them look cute, so if somebody puts them wherever, they're adorable. I hope you guys enjoyed this.